Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the FLIR One Pro thermal camera. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description of this on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I've been considering getting a thermal camera for a while now, and the reason I went with the FLIR One Pro is because it can record video, and a lot of the lower end thermal cameras will not record video. So this is the iPhone and iPad version, and they also have them for Android, and I'll put a link in the description of those models too. So there are two different models, that you have the FLIR One Pro and the FLIR One Pro LT, and the resolution on this one is 160 by 120. The resolution on the LT model is 80 by 60. So this has double the resolution, or four times the pixels. So if we look on the box, it says lightning down here. It doesn't say a lot in the back, it just says spot problems faster and work smarter with crisp thermal imagery and powerful measurement and reporting tools on board. On this side, it says MSX. Another reason I went with the FLIR is that a lot of different thermal cameras can overlay images. So you can overlay the camera image with a thermal image. So you can kind of tell what you're looking at. And FLIR calls theirs MSX. And from what I've read online, it's a great implementation of this. It has Vivid IR. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but a one fit adjustable connector and drop tested for up to 1.8 meters. So this one fit allows you to adjust the lightning plug so you can make it longer or shorter so it fits in your phone if you have a case. Looks like we have a piece of tape here. Has magnets to hold this shut. It says see the heat. Here we have a thank you. This is about export controls and it looks like we have a manual. This actually has cardstock for the front and back of the manual. Would make it a little more durable. That's nice. And here's the thermal camera. You can see you can turn this here to adjust this up and down. My first impression is that's not super easy to turn, and that's probably good. You don't want this to turn on its own. If you had to switch this between lots of different phones, like daily, that could be kind of a pain. And here we have the two cameras here. I'm guessing the top one's the regular camera and the bottom's thermal. I could be wrong. We have the power on off, and that's also the power indicator. And we have USB-C charge port. So this is actually slightly smaller than I was expecting. Comes with a case. It also comes with a USB-C charge cable, and it looks like that would fit in the case right here. So this is supposed to last around an hour per charge. So as a hobbyist, I think that'll work great for me. For a professional, I don't know if that would. If someone was inspecting houses, and say they took an hour to inspect a house, or maybe two hours, and they used a FLIR thermal camera for a portion of that inspection, then they could charge us in between visits of inspecting houses. Now, if someone really liked this, and they were, say, inspecting houses, and the charge got them through one house, but if it didn't charge up enough in time to go to the next house, you could certainly just buy two of these, and then just alternate between the two. And here's a close-up of it. So this is smooth, this metal surface, but the outside, this is rubber, and it's very grippy. So I'm going to plug this in to the USB-C, and I'll plug this into my USB charger. So this doesn't come with a charger. You can use a phone charger. It charges at one amp max, I think, which would be like a standard phone charger. So I'll plug that in over here. So according to this charger, it's charging at 0.62 amps. That can change over time. Okay, while that's charging, I'll download the app. So I'm on my iPad here. So I went to the App Store and I searched for FLIR. And if you're on Android, you would go to Google Play to do this. And I found FLIR 1, I'll hit Get. Okay, that is finished. So I'll open the app. It says it would like to access your photos. I'll say allow access to photos. It says welcome to the FLIR One app. Discover latest tips and tricks with thermal imaging. Join the FLIR One community. I'll hit enter. It has terms and conditions. I'll hit agree. I'll tap on the upper left. I'll hit camera. It wants to use my location, so I'll say allow while using app. That will allow it to geotag the photos. I'll connect the thermal camera. Before I do that, I'll turn this on. So I'll press the power button. And when it turns green, it's ready. It's kind of hard to see, but it's flashing green right now. I'll plug that into my iPad. 
And you can see there's a little gap there. So I can probably tighten that up just a little bit. I don't want to too much. I don't want to unplug. It says camera files not received. It says camera files could not be read. Temperature accuracy and MSX alignment may be degraded. I'm not sure what that means. So here we have the thermal camera and we can do video, photo, or time lapse. So you can see that the images are not lined up. There is an adjustment for that. Since the cameras are separated physically, they're not going to line up exactly. So I think they're set up to line up at about, is it three meters maybe? I read somewhere. So there is an adjustment on here to do that. But I'm going to cut this video now. I'm going to get into here and learn it and I'm going to make further videos on this. In this video I just wanted to do an unboxing and plug it in and see how it works. I am going to make a FLIR playlist so I'll put a link in the description of that playlist where you can find my other videos. So when I post this there will only be one video but if you're watching this beyond the day I posted there may be other videos in there. And if you have any ideas what you want me to test this on drop a comment below I'd be interested in that. I'd like to try and use it for maybe plumbing work, looking for leaks, using on automotive stuff. I have some ideas now, but if anyone has any other ideas, let me know. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.